Welcome back students. In this lecture, we'll see how to draw influence line diagram for shear force at a section in a indeterminate P. So uh, you already know as per the Monod Bressler principle, if you have to draw a shear force at a point, say if you take this example at in a two span continuous P, which is indeterminate to one degree, we will have to draw shear force at the point E. Ideally for shear force at point E, what you have to do is you have to cut the image, cut the beam at E and include a sliding device at E and apply a unit load, unit shear force this positive in nature on either side. So it is one downward on left side and one upward on the right side and then find the deflector shape so the deflector shape will look something like this the left hand side will go downward and the right hand side will go upward and the deflector shape will also ensure that all the compatibility conditions are uh, obeyed right so this will be the possible shape of the ILD at E so this is a qualitative ILD diagram actually however we don't know the exact value of E so if you have to know exact value of this ILD all you have to do is you have to divide this ILD value this you have to first of all find the actual deflection in this figure and then divide the deflection at each point divided by the total deflection at E which is FE that's it pretty which is displayed here so if you want to draw the ILD for shear force at E apply sh uh, sh positive shear force at the sliding device at E that is one downward and one upward on the left and right respectively find the deflection shape find the deflection at each point when this loading is applied and once that is deflection at each point is found out find the total deflection at E which is called as FEE and divide the deflection at each point by the FEE so it can be said that the molar Bressler principle is obeyed and also the 1 by FEE is the scale factor right so with this diagram we'll see an example so here we again have a two span bridge continuous two span bridge which means indeterminacy is 1 and you are asked to find out the ILD for shear force at the location T which is the mid span of AB let's say there is a new point which is E which is at the mid span of BC also okay so what we do for initially is at D will consider a sliding device and on the sliding device we will apply a positive shear a positive unit shear which means that one downward on the left hand side and one upward on the right hand side now with this what we have is actually two separate beams on left hand side is separate on right hand side is separate and we have to take care of the equilibrium of the system so that you can find out what is the reaction at each of the so, so there is a one force acting downward which means that to balance that there should be an upward reaction at A right so the reaction at A is going to be upward one then you can notice that there is a clockwise couple because of this one acting downward and one acting upward which is a value 1 into 9 so there is a clockwise moment of 9 to counteract that there should be an anti-clockwise moment of 9 right that's why we have a moment of 9 kilofeet at D okay so if there is a 9 kilofeet at D on the left hand side there should be a opposing moment on the right hand side so that the moment gets balanced right so there is a 9 kilofeet clockwise on the right hand side of the sliding device right there is also an upward force on the sliding device which is one okay one thing we know is reaction at b plus reaction at c should be 
equal to 1 right and you can take moment about b as 0 which means that 1 into 9 which is 9 which is clockwise plus 9 which is again clockwise so total it is 18 clockwise moment is equal to 18 into reaction at C which is anti clockwise right so 9 is equal to 18 9 plus 9 equal to 18 into reaction at C which means that reaction at C is going to be 1 so 1 plus so now you can find that reaction at P plus reaction at C was plus 1 is equal to 0 which means that RB should be equal to 1 plus 1 which means that it is 2 for second value so you can again examine this and find the reaction and equilibrium right so that's it now what we have to do is for this loading position which is the real beam we have to find out the reflection at each point whose deflection pattern will look something like this so we have to find out the reflection at each point in this reflection diagram and divide each of these point by a total deflection which is called as f dd that is deflection t due to load at t so this can be done by any force method say example we can use conjugate beam method yeah. right so this is our real beam we have to find out the deflection of this real beam for this given loading caused by the unit positive shift right for that we employ the conjugate beam method so one thing to notice here is when you draw the deflection diagram at d you have two different deflection which is on the left hand side there is a deflection downward and on the right hand side there is a deflection upward okay and as per the conjugate beam theorem you should know that the deflection at any point is equal to the moment in the moment at that point pending moment at that point in the conjugate beam so in order to obtain a certain deflection from negative to positive in the conjugate beam also there should be a certain change in moment so this can be obtained only with you include a external moment mt dash in the conjugate moment in the conjugate beam right so md dash is an externally applied conjugate beam in order to bring a change in moment on the left and right of the point d okay so with this background let's draw the conjugate beam for this real beam right so if you notice this is a internal hinge so internal hinge will be replaced by a so it is an internal support it will be replaced by a hinge right so this hinge can not resist moment but it can transfer the shear force the roller remains roller and the hinge will remain as the hinge right and the loading on this conjugate beam is going to be the bending moment on the real beam by ei so what is the bending moment on this real beam it could be a rectangle sorry it could be a triangle which looks like something like this so it will take instead of section here it will be x into 1 which is 1 into x so it is a linearly varying up to this point which is at this point it is 18 and you should note that it is a positive moment because on the right hand side you have a anti clockwise bending moment. Same thing on the left hand side also, if you consider, you can have this similar value, right? So, this is the bending moment diagram, it is positive. So, in the conjugate beam is noted by bending moment m by ei diagram of the real beam, which is 18 by ei. Same piece similar to the bending moment diagram, right? Now you have to find out the equilibrium of this conjugate beam which means that you have to find out the reaction at A, B, C and the external moment at D. 
so this is the loading diagram so we split this tag conjugate beam into two parts about the hinge you can find that there is a shear force acting so please note that there is an upward force which is externally caused so let's assume that the reaction here is downward and the shear force on the B on the right hand side is downward okay so if you notice this was 18 by EI and the length is 18 which means that the total load is the area of the triangle which is half into 18 by EI into 18 which value sum up to 162 by EI so there is a total load of 162 by EI acting at the center of the triangle which is at a distance of B by 3 which is base by 3 which is equal to 18 by 3 equal to 6 away from the perpendicular right so the total load is 162 by E and it is acting at a distance of 6 feet away from B dash so if you take moment at B is equal to 0 which is because B is a hinge so you can say that 162 into 6 is equal to RC dash into 18 which means that RC dash is going to be a value 54 by EA another thing you can notice is RC dash plus RB dash is going to be equal to 162 you already know what is RC dash which means that RB dash will be 162 minus 54 which is 108 by EA so this is a shear actually so 108 downward which means that it is a 108 by EA which is acting upward on the left hand side of B so this is a reaction at B for the left hand span you can note that for B dash for this span A, B, A dash B dash also you can see that the net load is the area of the triangle which is nothing but half into 18 by EI into 18 which is again 162 by EI acting at a distance of B by 3 from the perpendicular which is 18 by 3 equal to 6 feet right so you can note that the total upward force is 162 plus 108 which is 270 which means the reaction at A is going to be 270 down okay now you have to find out what is the value of MD dash so this is the moment value of MD dash you can obtain it by if you see the stability of this span A dash D dash you can see that there is 270 if you take moment about T there is 270 by EI which is anti-clockwise which it causes a moment anti-clockwise 162 by EI also causes an anti-clockwise moment 108 by EI also causes an anti-clockwise moment which means that to counteract all this moment there should be a clockwise moment at T dash right so MD dash is equal to 270 into this distance is 9 feet so 270 into 9 plus again 108 into 9 plus 162 into 3 so this will sum up to 3888 8, 8 by EA so MD dash is 3 double 8 by EA now you have the displacement real beam and the conjugate beam in order to find out the displacement in the points on the real beam all you have to do is you have to find out the bending moment on those points in the corresponding points of conjugate beam right so it is obvious from the diagram only that the deflection deflection at a b and c is going to be zero that means delta a equal to delta b equal to delta c is equal to zero okay now let's find what is the deflection out to the left of support d so the deflection to the left of support d is going to be the bending moment on the left of d right so which is equal to 270 into 9 which is a negative moment as it is a negative anti-clockwise moment on the left hand side so minus 270 into 9 by ea into 9 plus 
area of the triangle which is half into 9 by EI into 9 which sums up to 40.5 EI multiplied by the central distance which is 9 by 3 so it is 3 okay so you get deflection at B to the left is equal to minus 2308.5 by EI now if you want to find out the deflection to the right of D you have to find out the bending moment on the X at the right of D so everything remains same except that there is a new additional moment which is MD dash which is again clockwise in nature which means that it is a positive moment coming up so minus 2308.5 e by EI plus 3 double triple 8 by EI which will be equal to 1579.5 by EI so this will be the new bending moment to the just right of D so that is nothing but the deflection to the just right of T right next you can find out the deflection at E with where E is nothing but it is a midpoint of the span BC clear so at the mid span of point span BC which is somewhere here this is 18 by EI the loading which means that this is going to be 9 by EI right so all you have to find is what is the bending moment at this point for the given loading which is nothing but minus 54 into 9 so because on the right hand side a clockwise moment is negative so minus 54 by EI into 9 plus 40.5 which is the area of this triangle which is the total loading and acting upward creating a clockwise moment that means that is plus 40.5 into 3 feet so this is going to be minus 364.5 by EI right so now that we have got each points if you want to find out the ILD for shear phosphate at D all you need to do is find divide each of these deflection values by the total deflection at D which is nothing but summation of DL plus DR which will be nothing but the MD dash value which is 388 by EI so if we divide each of this point or each of these values by 388 by EI value you will be getting the ILD for shear positivity so if you find out the values will be something like this and if you plot you can get the shape of the ILD as this okay so if you compare with the qualitative diagram which you obtain from the molar Kessler principle you can see that both the shape is similar right also note that at D there is two values of deflection to the left and to the right there are two values similarly for the ILD also there is two values to the left as well as to the right of this D this is in D right today's lecture thank you